Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker and oftentimes when we're dealing with networks, we have to deal with different companies' products. So in this video, I'd like to do a quick demonstration of the integration between Fortinet's switching product called FortiSwitch and a Cisco Catalyst Switch with a Layer 2 Ether channel. So let's put a game plan together. So let's have a FortiSwitch and we'll also have a Cisco Switch. So as far as the plan, let's do an Ether channel from port number one on the FortiSwitch over to port number one on the Cisco Catalyst Switch. And let's also include port two on both sides. So over here on the switch one side, it's gigabit. <laughs> over here on this older switch, it happens to be fast ethernet. They'll sort that out. So effectively what we're gonna make is a link aggregation group, also called a lag. So the spanning tree just sees this link as one logical pipe. Although behind the scenes, we have more than just one interface that can be used. So in the world of Cisco, that is referred to as an ether channel bundle. And besides calling it ether channel, this is often referred to as port channel as well. So this is useful to know if somebody's referring to link aggregation or port channel or ether channel, they're talking about the same animal right here. In this case, we're implementing it at layer two. So we could say we have a layer two link aggregation group or a layer two ether channel bundle or a layer two port channel. It's all referring to the same thing. Over here on the Fortis switch, they refer to it as a lag, a link aggregation group. And behind the scenes, we're gonna be using trunking with 802.1Q. So for a deeper dive into the world of ether channel and port channel, please check out my other videos here on YouTube. And for this demonstration, I want to walk through the configuration and verification of the link aggregation group or the Ether channel between the Cisco device and the FortiSwitch device. So let's start here on the Cisco Catalyst switch. So here on the Catalyst switch, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into configuration mode and I want to default the configuration that's currently on the interface one and two. And a simple way of doing that is the default command with a default interface range, fast ethernet zero slash one through two, and boom, those guys are wiped out to their factory default. Next, let's go configure those ports. So we'll go into interface range for fast ethernet zero slash one all the way through two. And that way any commands we do here will apply to both of those interfaces simultaneously. And the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and shut them down. And that way we can make all our changes and then when we're ready, we'll bring it up. So those two interfaces are administratively shut down. They're also defaulted to their original factory default configuration. And let's specify that for these two ports, when we're doing trunking, that we want to do dot one q as opposed to the older isl let's also specify that we want to be a trunk and let's do a quick show command to see whether or not we have currently any ether channel set up we'll do a show ether channel summary and the reason i'm adding that do in front of it is because i'm in configuration mode so that's an easy way of injecting a show command without having to exit out of configuration mode we'll press enter and at the moment i have no ether channels so here's how we create our first one we type in channel group here in these two interfaces we pick a number, I'm gonna use channel group one. This is gonna make the logical port channel interface. And then we'll choose the mode we wanna use. And on this switch, we have a few options. We can use link aggregation control protocol, or we can use port aggregation protocol. So this one is an open standard, and this one is proprietary to Cisco. And if we wanna use link aggregation control protocol, we have two options. We have an option called active, and we have an option called passive. So I'll write those up here. And here's how that works. We have two devices and they are both using link aggregation control protocol. If both sides are set to active, think of that like meaning they're both actively excited about initiating a conversation. Either one of them will reach out to the other one and say, hey, do you want to set up an ether channel? And assuming the other side is willing, they'll go ahead and do it. The other option that works is active on one side and passive on the other. So if this is switch one and this is switch two, if switch one is set to mode active, it'll initiate the conversation and the passive side will say, hey, you know what? I've been waiting for you. Yeah, let's party. And it will agree to and then proceed to use link aggregation control protocol to set up the ether channel. So active active works, active passive works. So what does not work is if we have passive on both sides and that's just both sides sitting there waiting for an invitation, but they're not going to get one from each other because they're both set up as passive. So what I propose we do on the Cisco switch, let's go ahead and use mode active for link aggregation control protocol. So we'll just type in active and press enter. And look right there, it created the port channel interface for us called port channel one. That's the logical name for our ether channel. And if we hit the up arrow key a couple times and we do a do show ether channel summary and press enter, right here it's showing us that we're using link aggregation control protocol, that we have two ports associated with its ether channel, which is port one and port two. And then the capital S, right there refers to the fact that it is layer two and the capital D right there represents that it is currently down. Now it's down for a few reasons. Number one, uh, we don't have those interfaces up. And the second part is that we don't have the setup done over at the Forta switch. So let me go ahead and do a no shut here and bring those two interfaces up. All right, so the interfaces are physically coming up. Let's make a road trip over to the other side of the coin, which is our Forta switch, and we'll set up the ether channel there. 
So currently I'm logged on to a firewall that's in charge of the switching stack, the Forda switches. So there's our switch one. And if we want to configure a manual trunk, what we could do is just go down right here on the left to Forda switch ports. And there's three tabs up here, one for port, which shows all the ports on those devices. So we want to use port one and two. There's a tab for faceplates, and there's a tab for trunking. And this is where we would set up manual trunks to third-party devices. For example, in this case, the Forda switch going over to the Cisco device. So we'll click here on Create New. From the drop-down, we'll select Trunk Group, which is really effectively a group of trunks that are going to be operating as an Ether channel on the Cisco side. In the world of Fortinet and on the Forda switch, they refer to it as a link aggregation group or a lag. And let's name this FSW for Forda switch to Cisco. So for this side, we could have it be passive or we could have it be active. Either way is great because active, active works. Then we're going to identify the member interfaces that we want to be part of this Ether channel. Again, in a Forda switch world, they would call this the lag. And so we want to use port one on switch one and port two on switch one. So we simply select those, click on apply, and then click on OK. And da 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 da. Now we've just done the Ether channel equivalent here at the Forda switch. So the last step is to verify that it's working. So here on the Fortinet side, there's options in the GUI and also at the CLI to verify it. But because we want to focus on Cisco for this video, let's go take a look at the CLI at the Cisco switch to verify that our Ether channel is working. So back here at the Cisco switch, let's do a show Ether channel summary. And now it shows port channel one, layer two and up, which is fantastic. And if we do a show interface trunk, now it shows that we have port channel one acting as a trunk and forwarding for VLANs 1, 10, 20, and 30. So if we do a show spanning tree, for VLAN 10, for example, and press enter. Here's showing that this switch is the root bridge for VLAN 10. And as a result, all of its ports are forwarding, which is just at the moment, this one port, port channel number one. Now, as far as layer two discovery protocols go, uh, CDP is on, on most switches by default, most Cisco switches, and LLDP, <laughs> the open standard for layer two discovery, is enabled on most other vendors' products. So in addition, let's do this. Let's go to configuration mode. And let's enable LLDP on the Cisco switch with the command LLDP, run, and press enter. So now behind the scenes, we're running LLDP. In fact, I wonder if that was already present. Let's do a show startup config, LLDP. I just want to see if it was currently, and I'll do an include there. That'll help. Oh, yeah, so that wasn't in the startup config. So we'll give LLDP a few moments. Then if we do a show LLDP interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1, I just want to make sure it's running there. It is. Great, great, great. And then we'll do a show LLDP neighbors. And sure enough, right there, I've got switch one, the uh, Forda switch, off of my local ports, fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and 2, to it, the remote ports on that Forda switch of port 1 and 2. And if we want more detail, we could do a show LLDP neighbors detail to show even more information that was discovered via link layer discovery protocol. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in another video or live event soon. What you putting in All your hopes and efforts Are all in vain Who will pick you up When you've lost everything